Cavity mounts are a great way to conserve small to medium-sized fossils for long-term shelf life. They can be used in collections trays of all sizes, even entire drawers. They're a great way to give your type specimens, or any fragile fossil, the deluxe treatment. If we're going to make an archival cavity mount, we need archival grade materials. An acid-free specimen tray, some ethafoam board, soft wrap Tyvek, polyester batting, and some corrugated bumper board. These materials are all chemically inert and will last for decades without degradation or damage to specimens. You'll also need some tools, a cutting mat, a box cutter, an X-Acto knife, flat or retractable knives, a mini spatula, a ballpoint pen, cuticle scissors, and a metal ruler. The first thing you need to do in making a cavity mount is determine what size tray you need. Remember to account for a quarter inch margin all around the specimen, and factor in space for any labels, subtrays, or thumbnail photos that you'll need to add. Cut a bed out of the ethafoam board. You can flip the tray onto the board and use it as a jig to trace your cut marks with a ballpoint pen. Then use your metal straight edge to cut inside the lines. Make sure your tools are sharp and always watch your fingers. Choose a thickness of ethafoam that's right for the size, weight, and fragility of your specimen. For cavity mounts, you need a bed that's at least a half an inch thick. Make sure your bed fits snugly in the tray, or trim it if it's too big. If there's only one closed cell side to your ethafoam, make sure that side is facing up. You want the smooth, not the rough side of the board. This sealed surface will be easier to clean during the lifetime of your housing. Decide how the specimen will best be arranged in the tray, then trace its silhouette on the surface of the bed in ballpoint pen. Ballpoint is great because it cleans off pretty easily with ethanol. Then take a knife and cut the silhouette neatly out of the ethafoam. You could carve the cavity out with a gouge or hot knife and make it fit the contours of the specimen precisely, but that's often more trouble than it's worth. And cutting the silhouette out in a neat plug has its advantages later on. Figure out the safest places to pick up the specimen and cut finger holes to guide future users. So you've cut your cavity. Now take your X-Acto knife and cut a slit around the entire rim of the cavity. A quarter inch away from the edge is ideal. Any closer and the wall can collapse when you tuck the tie back in. Don't cut all the way through the foam bed. Make the slit a quarter to a half an inch deep. Put some polyester batting in the bottom of the cavity to cushion the specimen. If your specimen isn't flat, you can use batting to support higher or more delicate parts. Never use cotton batting. Cotton attracts pests. Nothing eats polyester. Cut a piece of Tyvek that's about twice the footprint of your cavity. Be generous. You don't want to come up short. The Tyvek will minimize abrasion to the specimen. Tyvek has two sides. One is very slick, the other slightly rough. Learn to feel the difference. Crumple the Tyvek to make it more flexible. Place the rough side down in the cavity. You want the slick side up against your fossil. Hold the Tyvek firmly against the bottom of the cavity. Take your mini spatula and tuck the Tyvek into the slit circling the rim of the cavity. Keep holding the Tyvek down against the floor of the cavity so that it lies as flat as possible. Now don't try to jam all the Tyvek down in the slit. You should be left with a little fringe sticking up all around. The Tyvek is going to gather a bit over the edge of the cavity. Try to avoid large folds. Spread the bunching out as much as possible. Check the fit of the Tyvek in the cavity, then check the fit of the specimen. You can retuck sections if there's room for improvement. The Tyvek forms a single seamless pocket that'll catch any fragments of fossil, 
if they break off. When you've got the fit the way you want it, take your cuticle scissors and trim the excess fringe. The curved edge of the scissors makes it harder to accidentally cut a hole in the Tyvek. Then tuck the remainder into the slit. With the Tyvek liner in place, put the specimen in the cavity. If any part of the specimen sticks up over the top edge of the tray, you should cut corner bumpers. Measure from the bottom of the tray to a quarter or half inch above the highest point on the specimen. Using your box cutter, cut two panels of archival board the height you measured against the specimen. When you cut the board, make sure the corrugations run vertically. Now four inches is a good average width, but the width depends on the scale of the mount and the height of the bumper. You're looking for stability. Trim the top corners. Find the midline on the panels and use your straight edge and box cutter to gently score one side between corrugations. On polypropylene board, you can cut an entire channel out on one side to get a better fold. Fold the panels into 90 degree angles. Hold them against the opposite corners of the ethofoam bed and trace their footprint in ballpoint pen. Take the bed out of the tray and trim the corners to make room for the bumpers. Place the bed back in the tray. Insert the bumpers into the corners. Now, if someone tries to shove the tray into a shelf or drawer that's too low, they'll hit the bumpers before they hit the specimen. And there you have it, a nice cavity mount for your specimen. Note that this mount was made entirely without adhesives. Next, we'll cover a few variations on this basic formula.